Buying your first house is quite a linear process. You get pre-approval, you buy a house. When it comes time to sell your home and buy a new one, the journey is more of a pick a path. In this video, I'll take you through the process. So let's say you've found the house of your dreams but haven't yet sold your current home. What next? There are a couple of options. The first option is to make an offer conditional on selling. This option means you aren't taking on the risk or extra cost of a bridging loan. However, it does make your offer a lot less attractive to the vendor as they are reliant on you selling your previous home in order to go unconditional on their home. In a hot market, it could be hard to get your offer accepted. This strategy doesn't work if the house you are buying is being sold by auction, as all sales at auction are unconditional. Your next option is to make an offer with a pre-approved bridging loan. Lenders can provide you with bridging finance to allow you to purchase your new home before selling your existing one. During the period of the bridging loan, you are paying interest on both your original mortgage and your bridging loan. That loan can be reasonably costly and sometimes you'll be outside the main bank criteria, meaning you'll be paying higher interest rates. But bridging and lending gives you the flexibility to buy the house you want, not just the house that was available within a tight time frame. Getting pre-approved through a bridging loan is almost the same process as the usual pre-approval, where the lender will need to approve any properties before you put an offer on them. The deposit is usually taken from equity from the current property, but can also be made up of cash if you have some. The aim is to sell your current home as soon as possible to minimize the cost of a bridging loan. I will sell this house today. There are two types of bridging loans, an open bridge and a closed bridge. An open bridge allows you to purchase a new home with no specific date of when you've sold your old home. Generally, these loans specify that you need to sell your old house within 12 months. A closed bridge is a bridging loan when you already know the specific settlement date for your current home. Usually you'd have an unconditional offer in place for your current home. This is great for when there is overlap between settlement of your old property and settlement of your new one. Closed bridge loans have a lower risk for the bank, so are easier to get than open bridge loans. Having said that, non-bank lenders are more flexible and often able to provide a solution when the banks can't. Open bridging finance works well if the property you're selling has attractive qualities and is likely to get lots of interest or the market is just running hot. If your house has red flags, such as plaster cladding or leasehold title, it is likely to be on the market longer than other houses in your area. The resulting large interest payments over a longer period would need to be taken into consideration and planned for. When it comes to the additional costs of bridging, try not to think of them as painful expenses, rather think of them as a cost of doing business. Let's say you're buying a new home for $1.2 million and the bridging loan is going to cost you an additional $20,000. Would you have paid $1.22 million for the new home? Odds are, in most circumstances, you would. The cost of your new home is just the purchase price plus the additional cost of bridging. So that covers buying your new home, then selling your old one. What about selling your first, then buying your new home? This path is nice and simple. Once you've sold your home, you'll know exactly how much of a deposit you have and your mortgage broker will be able to progress your pre-approval. You'll remember from buying your first home that the pre-approval is a promise from a bank or finance company to lend you up to a maximum amount of money. The offer expires after two to three months, usually with the option to renew for a total period of six months before requiring a full new application. As a reminder, getting pre-approval comes down to two things. Proof of deposit, usually a 20% minimum deposit is best, but less is still achievable, and proof of your income. Once you've got pre-approval, you're ready to put an offer on your next home. So there you have it for an end-to-end -end look at the home buying process, including house buying tips and a review of the settlement process. See our full article, What Happens When You Go To Buy Your Next House. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch. I'm Rupert Goff from The Mortgage Lab. Talk to you soon.